Yes guys, what's going on? Hashtag Shory here. Welcome back to another video on the channel guys. Here today guys, we are back with some more Foot Champions gameplay highlights. It's been a while, it's been a while since I've been able to say that. So it's great to be saying that again. We're almost back in full flow with the hands. So we're starting to get a little bit of weekend league in there now. And yeah, wanted to go in on my PS account and use a 300k team this weekend. As you guys will see by the thumbnail, we've got some pretty decent players in there. And we'll get into the squad real quick here, guys. But if you do enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and also subscribe to the channel, guys. And turn on the notifications because that would just be absolutely wonderful. Thanks. I uh, really appreciate it. Every time every time without fail. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the team that we used for this weekend league, guys. So like I said, 300k team at this point into the game, it's actually quite a cheap squad. Like I feel like a lot of you guys should have 300k. Now I'm not saying this is the absolute best 300k team on the game. However, this was a lot of fun to use. I really want to try out this freeze nanny. So that's the squad as you can see there, guys. And then in game, we switch to a 4-4-2 and we play Alaba at CM with Lema and then Zakaria at center back. Nanny and Felix up front and then Dembele on the left and Sancho on the right. As I did in my 200k squad builder, putting Zakaria at centre-back and swapping him with Alaba, who works a bit better as a CDM, is just absolutely great. Like, Zakaria at centre-back, I'm telling you, fellas, unreal. But this is the first 15 games in this episode, guys, and I recorded this off-stream. I didn't play these games on stream, so what I'm going to do in this video, as we jump into the games here, I'm just going to answer a few of your guys' questions. I put a story up on Instagram, which if you're not following, uh, I'll leave that in the description as well. Great chance to plug. Well done, Alex. That's where I'll normally ask if I want some questions for a video, etc. But we'll jump into the questions in a second here, but hopefully you guys should really enjoy this gameplay because there's actually a load of goals in it a load of quite decent goals we've got four four star skillers in nanny felix dembele and sancho all playing in the front four so we've got some decent skill goals going on you guys get the gist of it let's jump into some questions from you guys and see what you had to say on instagram first question we have got here comes in from the main man marcus stamp hashtag legend how hard is it to adjust the new gameplay patches how many games roughly does it take now it's a very good question to be fair obviously as professional fifa players when a new patch comes out you know say they make something worse they make a skill move worse or they make a type of passing worse or anything in the game worse we've got to play the game we've got to adjust to what then works the best next after that if that makes sense Ooh, tom's in the background let's say hello tom uh. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, as gamers, it's something that we do a lot, you know, adjusting to the gameplay. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Obviously, we've got to put a few games of practice in there. But with the amount we play the game, like, for example, I do 60 games of weekend league per weekend. It just ends up coming into flow. But definitely something to adjust to. Thank you for the question, Stamps. Very much appreciated. Much love, big man. Next question we've got coming in from ZQP1. And the question is, what is your go-to meal deal? Now, I'm not being funny or anything, right? Tom has literally just walked in the room right now. Now, he would laugh and he would say, oh, it's a ham sandwich right from when i have my ideal meal deal right it was tesco barbecue chicken wrap with salt and vinegar mccoys and a ribena absolutely top notch now you guys might think well you know trust me barbecue chicken absolutely sensational and it's not a ham sandwich not a plain ham sandwich well they are quite nice though next question we've got coming in from murphy one sean will you do more vlogs Yes. Great question. Moving on. <laughs> now, on a real, yeah, me and Tom throughout the year are going to be vlogging loads of different things. I've got many qualifiers throughout the year. Obviously, this year is all going to be completely remote, so we're not traveling to any places for events. So you're going to be seeing a lot of this same HQ, but we might look at adding stuff from the flat and when we can hopefully like go out again, etc. that type of stuff. Maybe vlog some hashtag games or something like that. We'll definitely get them types of things done for sure, fellas. Next question coming in from Wallace Archie. He says, favorite player on FIFA ever. Now, to be honest, what I'd probably have to say is Ibrahimovic from FIFA 14. He was just absolutely ridiculous. I think he only had like 76 pace on his normal card, but genuinely just every time you shot, it just went in the goal. And that is probably what we want in football, isn't it really? Uh, in a FIFA game. Uh, I'm just going to be quiet now. But Ibrahimovic, FIFA 14, on a real, I have to be honest. Back then, I didn't even have the coins to be able to get the team of the year Ibrahimovic back. I can only imagine how good he was in that game. Next question coming in from Cameron Cartmill. And he says, what's your favorite accent to do? Now, it's a good question. There's a few people I enjoy doing, you know, the McGregor. We've got the Roy Hodgson. But I think I'd have to say at the moment my favourite one to do is Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua, right? You're an absolute bum. All right, no chance. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just burst into it at, at any time possible. But you know, they're all quite a bit of fun to do, especially when people actually react um, well, which they do. I'd like to think sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> right, Elliot Bland in with the next question, and he says, "Do you think tomato ketchup is immature?" <laughs> What? I think if that question had said mayo to me, I'd have said yes, definitely. Mayo is a bit immature, you know, like mayo. On a real ketchup all the way for me. Um, I probably get blasted in the comments because I don't rate mayo, but it's just a it's just a solid two out of ten for me, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, chaps. Unsubscribe if you'd like. Please don't. Thanks. 
Okay, I am seeing this question a lot, but it's coming in from Kian Fishwick 09 best hashtag memory. Now, there's so many things that I could look at here. There's so many different events I've been to. There's so many great moments at the club. I think I've mentioned this in a video before, but it's good to say again, I guess. From when I finished top eight in Bucharest, that was my first event representing hashtag properly at a Champs Cup in FIFA. And to finish top eight at an event as well, that basically like secured my playoff place for later in the year. That was during FIFA 19 in Bucharest. And it gave me a chance, you know, to get towards the grand finals as well. And just absolutely surreal feeling. Like, I can remember when I won the penalty shootout, the feeling was just like, I couldn't, you know, I just genuinely disbelief. Like, on my reaction, it's just like ridiculous. And then I came out of the room, and because in the studio, like, no one was allowed to come into the studio. I remember just coming out, and like, Harry, Wes, and Tex all just waiting outside, and all just like jumped on me and gave me a huge hug. <laughs> Oh, like, that's just that's a huge huge moment and then i'd probably have to say as well like if i could put like a close second it'd just be like the trips that me and wes went on sometimes were just absolutely unreal like draft story cup was absolutely quality and then we went to atlanta together as well for like one of the lqes that i played in i qualified for and wes he's just an absolute hero i miss him so much <laughs> but yeah i'd have to I'd probably have to say that a close second but you guys asked the favorite moment it'd have to be the top eight in bucharest i've been answering this question for 10 years i could probably write a write a book on it next question coming in from sam clark 16 and he says is it true that you broke your hand next question we have got in <laughs> i can't even keep a straight face while saying this Next question coming in from Cam Stark, and he says, "What is Tom? <laughs> what is Tom's particular breed of pigeon?" <laughs> Tom? <laughs> if you didn't hear that, he said, "Grow up, Alex." Sorry, that one just had to be read out. Next question we've got coming in from Lou Brown, and he says, "Best coin for coin player." on FIFA 21. Now for me, that can only be one man and it's the main man, Usman Dembele. He has literally been, I've done like four squad builders this year and he's been in every single squad builder so far. And he's just had to be because he just, for the price you're getting for, five star skills, five star weak foot. You guys have heard me blab on about him enough. Get him in your squad. Next question coming in from Anam21 and says, favorite things about being a professional FIFA player. Now there's many, many, many good parts of being a professional FIFA player. I think the main thing that I would say is just is amazing about it is just sort of getting to do something that I enjoy and that I'm passionate about. You know, other than wanting to be a professional footballer, if you offered me being a professional gamer in the, a football game, you know, I'd bite your hand off for it from when I was younger. And it's something that I never exactly knew was going to happen. You know, when I was playing like FIFA 14 and 15, I was such an average player, even up to FIFA 17 sort of. And that, FIFA 18 was where it sort of changed a little bit. And I sort of grew into becoming more of like a top 100 player then grew into being a professional player but i'd say the main thing is just getting to do something i enjoy obviously there's so many great aspects to it as well you know having teammates getting to do youtube videos getting to do twitch streams traveling to events meeting loads of new people like the ceiling in this industry is just absolutely crazy and yeah i've met lifelong friends in this <laughs> i'm writing an absolute essay here but yeah 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 it's just it's just absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm blessed to be in the position, to be fair. Next question coming in from Jack Eaton, and he says, how are you so good at being imposter in Among Us? I mean, you know what they say, guys? Uh, I don't know what they say. I really don't. For you guys who actually don't know, uh, if you haven't tuned in to any uh, Among Us streams of mine, you probably don't want to if you want to watch some good Among Us gameplay. Yeah, not the greatest on the sticks, it's fair to say. Um, but we're, we're improving very, very, very s slowly. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on from this question. Basically, you can tell that I'm an imposter straight away. Next question coming in from Adam Davidson 05, and he says favorite moment during the quarantine you've had together. Now, obviously, during the first lockdown, it was me, Tom, Harry, and Wes sort of locked down together, literally just in our own little bubble, obviously. And there was lots of great moments, but I think the best thing I would say was sort of, we'd all together like have one day off per week because we were just obviously smashing out content at that time because obviously the pro scene had been put on pause. And the sun started coming out, you know, because it was sort of like May sort of time. And we had some great days where we whacked on a disposable barbecue and just had a good chill. So I'd say they were probably my favorite moments. And then obviously as well, the support from you guys on like the YouTube and the Twitch just was absolutely unbelievable. Quarantine was just absolutely crazy. Next question coming in from Harvey Balderstone. I've, I've probably pronounced that horrendously. And he says, favorite Liverpool player, past or present? Now, there's only one answer here for me. He's literally the reason that I like kind of got into football is Stevie G. I like a photo in there now. <laughs> Actually met Gerard a few times through my dad. And uh, people always wonder, why do I support Liverpool? Because I'm from Derby. As sort of that happened and I met Gerard a few times, that was when I started to like really get into football. It was probably when I was about like, nine years old, 10 years old or something like that. And yeah, I just became obsessed with 
over him, which then made me obsessed with Liverpool. That's why I'm a Liverpool fan. So, um, you know, you learn something new every day. Just, just shut up, Alex. Next question coming in from Livey Sykes. And he says, what were you like at school now? I'll be, I'll be completely honest here in school. I would say I was, I definitely wasn't the most, um, let's say, interested student. We'll put it, we'll put it as that. I think I was very into my gaming when I was younger. And I would say to you guys, <laughs> do focus on school as much as you can. I think, I think the teachers liked me. I think I was always very polite to the teachers, but I just think, they also hated me because of how little work I did. No, to be fair, I didn't do I didn't do too badly, but I definitely wasn't the, the the star of the show. We'll put it like that. I'm not that person that runs around going, "Oh, I got 10 A stars and one A." I'm so annoyed at that. I'm like, "What? Please." Now, if the setup looks different behind me, I've done the noob move of not answering enough questions, so I've had to re-record. Absolutely brilliant. Next question coming in from Jacob Hawkins Five, who says, "Craziest football game I've ever been to." Now, this one's pretty easy for me. Now, I've had to Google the date of this because this was many, many years ago, and I actually got tickets for this for Christmas, I believe. It was on the 8th of February, 2014. It was when Liverpool beat Arsenal 5-1 at Anfield. And funny thing is, Dan, if you're watching this, I brought my best mate Dan along, who is an Arsenal fan, and uh, it was just hilarious because it was the game we literally went like 4-0 up in 20 minutes and like every five minutes we just kept scoring we just kept scoring it was like it was surreal I was there like is this actually happening and my mate honestly we're obviously sat in the homestand and my mate is literally just head in hands like you know in the crowd I'm like, you know, I'm like grabbing. I'm like, Dan, like, you can't like do this because, like, you know, it's gonna be really obvious that you're an Arsenal fan and Liverpool fans are gonna be like, well, what are you doing? What on earth are you doing here? But now that's definitely the craziest game I've ever been to. I remember Suarez almost scored like one of the best goals of the season. Like, I think he volleyed it and like hit the post. It was so close to going. It would have been a quality goal. But yeah, that was definitely the craziest game I've ever been to. Like, seeing four goals in 20 minutes the way they were scored was just absolutely mental. And next question we've got coming in from Fonzo two three four five six seven eight. Absolutely fantastic username saying, what's your favorite Netflix show? Now for me, there's two very, very top contenders that I don't know how I'd pick between and that would be Breaking Bad and Prison Break. I don't know if they're both still on there now, but from when I watched them, they were. And I've watched them both two or three times. Uh, and yeah, they're both just absolutely ridiculous series. Absolutely unbelievable. Anybody watching this who has not seen Breaking Bad or Prison Break, please just, just, just do it because I will say I'm actually one of them people who like it's quite hard for me to get into things but with them two shows genuinely one or two episodes in I was absolutely gripped I feel like I'm a I feel like I'm IMDB here some sort of movie reviews but I'm pretty sure Breaking Bad is like the highest rated TV show of all time so if that doesn't sell it to you uh, I just can't help you Zeki41 coming in with the next question saying when did you qualify first to a bigger competition basically saying when did I ever qualify for my first proper event. And that was during the FIFA 18 season. Basically, for the first qualifier of FIFA 18, which was for Barcelona, I didn't even know that there was a qualifier. I didn't even know how you could get into an event or whatever. But then in February was the qualification for the Manchester event, which was the second Foot Champions Cup of that year, which went on in April. But the qualification was in February. And I thought to myself, you know what? I think the month before that, or maybe in December it was, I hit my first top 100 finish. So I was starting to like do all right in Foot Champs. And I thought to myself in the February qualification, I know nothing about this, but I thought I may as well just go for it and see how I do. I think I ended up getting 37 wins, 39 wins, 39 wins, and 38 wins to get 153 out of 60. And I think I qualified in like 47th place out of 64. I know these stats way too well. I don't know why I can remember this so clearly. But yeah, that was the first event I ever qualified for FIFA 18 Manchester. And yeah, hopefully qualify for many, many more events coming up in the future here. But that was definitely quite a defining moment in my sort of FIFA career because I actually proved to myself, right, I can actually compete with these people. I can actually qualify for these global tournaments. Final question here coming in from Callum Mooney 15 and he says, what do you think your job would be if you were not a YouTuber? So obviously YouTuber slash gamer type thing. In all complete honesty, in all complete and utter honesty, I have absolutely no idea how to answer that question. So before I was doing professional FIFA, I was working in a bar and I was just working in a bar as one of them things where it's like, okay, basically I finished college. After I dropped out of sixth form, I just hated sixth form. I just couldn't do any more English. I was there like, no. <laughs> but I went to college and did a computer games development course. Went pretty well in the end. I think I got equivalent to like three C's at A levels. So like I could have gone to uni off them grades. But then I was just there like, oh, you know, I'll just take a gap year because I was working at this pub while I was at college anyway. So then I just went full time at this pub. And then like you say that you're going to do a year of a gap year and then you just continue on. And all of a sudden it had been a year and a half. And I was like, right, what am I actually going to do? And I'd say the same to you guys, you know, like at the end of the day, without getting too deep here, 
it's hard to know exactly what you want to do. You know, maybe in my head, I thought to myself, oh my God, it'd be amazing to go into an eSport and, you know, have a sustainable job in it, for example. But that's more of a dream sort of thing. It's not something that I thought in my head until it just ended up happening itself. So I'd say to all you young guys watching this, like don't overthink or worry too much that you don't know what you want to do. Things can just end up falling into place without you even realizing. But yeah, in all honesty, I say that, I would have no clue what I'd be doing right now. <laughs> so hopefully that was helpful. But that is the end of the questions there, guys. Let me know if you found this enjoyable. As you can see there, we finished the episode 15 and 0. I'll bring out the next episode in the next few days to see if we can clutch up the 30 and 0 with the 300k team. And the second episode, just to let you guys know as well, is all live com. So obviously this was all post com, but I did the last 15 games on stream. So you'll see some live commentary in them with loads of it. It's got so many epic moments in it, to be fair. So it should be decent. But hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Drop a like and also subscribe to the channel if you did. And I hope you all have a great day and I'll catch you all on the next one.